Hello everybody, welcome to another Vintage Cube Draft where we have an Ancestral Recall. Great start, of course. It's a little bit awkward here when we're passing some great blue stuff, passing Jace the Mind Sculptor, Sheldock Isle, and Breeding Pool. Um, none of these are like phenomenal picks. Back in the day, Jace the Mind Sculptor was like a top 30 card probably, maybe even top 20, so you really didn't want to pass this because it would be guaranteed that they would take Jace. But here, like, there's a good chance that the person we passed you takes like Verdant Catacombs or shallow grave maybe even like a Talia retrofitter foundry um, but even if it is bad from a signaling perspective i'm taking ancestral just a really good card um there was a time where i thought this was arguably the best card in the format blue is not quite as good as it once was but still very very happy to get this first and now i'll follow it up with underground sea another good pickup um there's also like spell bomb ledger shredder uh i do just on power level ren and six is great but underground sea is good I also think that blue-black is a particularly good color combination for Ancestral because black has access to lots of one-minute interactive spells, both removal spells and discard spells. So like turn one, Ancestral, turn two, like Fatal Push, Thought Seize is like an incredibly strong start. Um, also good in Reanimator. You can Ancestral yourself on turn one, then go to discard and pitch whatever big boy you have. So if uh, Shallow Grave comes around, that's something we'll consider. Love this start. Okay, another pack with some good cards. Uh, I think I'm leaning towards taking Narset here. There is a fetch land, but it doesn't grab our underground sea. Dark Confidant's pretty good, but I think I would rather take the Narset at this stage. Uh, there's like Path, Soul Guide Lantern, Colonnade, all those good cards. The One Ring too. But I like Narset for a few reasons. First of all, just it is a really good card. It's also, it can find Ancestral. But even beyond that, Blue-Black is the perfect color combination for this sort of effect because you can play like... Shieldred, Hole Breacher, Orcish Bowmasters, and Shieldred as ways to make Draw 7s non-symmetrical. And getting it this early, we can then take Draw 7s very highly. So I'm pretty happy to see this card going third. Okay, got a couple options here. We could just take Creeping Tar Pit if we want to lean more into blue-black. You could take Thought Scour, which like doesn't necessarily have synergies, but it's not the worst. There's also, like, Unearth. I don't think that's where we want to go, though. It's good with, like, Hole Breacher, but we don't have Hole Breacher. Um, I'm not taking Bitter Blossom for sure. So, really, it's between Creeping Tar Pit and Thought Scour. Hmm. We don't even know that we want to play Blue, but Black does... Or, sorry, Black, but Black does look pretty open. And Thought Scour really doesn't do that much. It's not terrible. But it's kind of underwhelming. I would take like a Ponder here for sure, but I think I'm going to take Creeping Tar Pit. There's also Rogren Triome, but I like the idea of like sort of getting good fixing for Blue Black. And now we see it late Inquisition of Kozilek, which is great. Um, I mean, easiest pick ever. There's no other blue or black cards. We could take some like potential red splashing. I do think Grixis is a good color combination, but pretty easy Inquisition of Kozilek having just taken some black fixing. Ooh, okay, so now we see Fire Covenant, which is really strong. We just passed some red stuff, but I think I like taking the Covenant here. There's also Relic of Progenitus, but yeah, let's take the Fire Covenant. I also think, like, blue-black looks fairly open, but not so open, so going into third color seems like it's a reasonable move. Hopefully one of those two red lands we saw two picks ago comes around. All right, I think I'll take a Treachery here. There is Baleful Mastery, which is pretty good. Actually, maybe it's better. Treachery used to be an extremely high pickup, but it's gotten a lot worse. Five mana is just so much, and a lot of the creatures it's not that good against. Baleful Mastery is much cheaper. Also instant speed. Close pick. Um, I think I'm going to err on the side of the cheaper card. Yeah, crazy to pass Treachery, but I, I do think um, Baleful Mastery is going to be slightly better for us here. Now we see Odawar versus Sunken Ruins. I think I will take the Ruins. Odawar is good, but I like this. There's also a chance we could end up being a Doomsday deck, in which case having this to help fix for Triple Black is really helpful. Okay, this is our first pack on the wheel. Not looking great. There's a lot of white stuff here. White is pretty open. I think I'll take Retrofit or Foundry. Not a super valuable pickup, but it's not the worst. I am not that interested in Tezzeret. Um, and we could get Urza Saga, in which case this would be great. It is also just like a fine card. Um, could backdoor into some sort of Tinker deck. So we'll take the, the Foundry. 
All right, pretty easy Ledger Shredder here. We're looking like we're not too in on the artifacts. We could try to force it, but Ledger Shredder is good, especially with a low curve like this. Yeah, pretty happy to get this. We don't want to get too many creatures in our Narset deck, but this is our first creature, so I'm not too worried about it. And I think the next pack is the one that had um, two red lands, so I would love to see one of those come around, both a blue red land and a black red land. We could also just cut the Fire Covenant. We have great fixing for blue-black if we end up not playing red, but this is a, a big upgrade in power level. I mean, actually, we already have a high power level without it, but Fire Covenant's very strong. Okay, Fiery Islet. There's Soul God Lantern too, but pretty easy Fiery Islet. Good pickup. Colonnade as well, but I, I mean, white did look open, but we already have a red card that we really want. I think I'm going to take this. And Thought Scour Wield. Interesting. There's also Trinket Mage, but I think I will take the Thought Scour here. Yeah, this finds Retrofit or Foundry, but that's not that good. I want to keep my uh, non-creatures up for Narset. I also want to have one-drops for Ledger Shredder. Um, don't think we're ever playing either of these, so I'll take Hangerback, Tamashi, and probably some bad white card as the last pick. <laughs> yeah, but great start. Uh, very, very good first pack. Good curve. Lots of card draw. And now we see a Mox. That is pretty sweet. It's not on color, but still, not going to complain. Very good pickup. Um, we also see Jace, which would be great. Very, very good in an Ancestral deck. We're also going to be filling our graveyard quickly. There's Brainstorm. Pretty unlikely that either one of these comes around, but possible. More likely we'll wheel something like Deep Cavern Bat. But, yeah, pretty happy to get a Mox, even an off-color one. <laughs> we get past a Soul Ring. Okay. Um, now I'm kind of wishing we took that, uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm kind of wishing that I took the Trinket Mage, but still, great to get past a Mox. It is like, we don't use colorless mana that well yet, but we have time. Now that we have two ways to make some cheap colorless mana, we can adjust our pick order slightly. Okay, now we see True Name Nemesis, Fire Ice, Subtlety. Based on power level, there's Channel and Solitude, but I don't think that's really where we're going to be. We're not really a green-white deck. A um, couple pieces of fixing for white, but let's just take Subtlety, I think. We could also take Fire Ice. I do like Fire Ice a lot, and it gives us another non-creature for Narset. I think Subtlety is worth taking, though. Yeah, I'll take this card. This pack is almost shockingly bad for us, frankly, um, at this stage in the draft, or like this early in the pack, seeing no blue cards, only this ritual and like soul scar mage for black and red. We can't take pyrite spell bomb. Definitely not a, a slam dunk. There is Ugin, which is good like with soul ring, but it just seems a little too expensive for this deck. But pyrite spell bomb is a pretty good pickup, so I will take it. And now we see, ooh, Palantir of Orthanc versus Kolagon's Command. Close pick. Palantir is good with Soul Ring. But we do have a low curve, which makes this card a bit worse. I think I'm going to take the Colagun's Command. Close pick, though. Not good with Soul Ring, but still. Just like a very good card. Interesting pick here. Bitter Triumph is a very elite removal spell. I would take that over Hard Evidence. But I think I'm going to take the Stormcarved Coast. I want to get good fixing. These two red cards are worth splashing for. Um, we also took Baleful Mastery pretty highly, so we already have a good way to deal with Planeswalkers, and we're going to have millions of playables. So let's just make sure we can cast them. Wow, close pick. Dragon's Rage Channeler is excellent. This is looking like a good uh, Nettlesis deck now that we have so many artifacts, but there's also Badlands, and I think I'm going to take the Badlands here. We can't really take Channeler until we get more fixing. So then it becomes Nettlesis versus Badlands, but Badlands is just so helpful. As good as this card is, like with Soul Ring, it's not really a part of our game plan. It's also better when you have more creatures. Like in this deck, if they just kill the initial creature, we don't have a ton of other stuff to equip it on. Okay, late miscalculation. Love getting that. Uh, yeah, nothing else is really a consideration here. Brainstorm Wield. That's pretty sweet. We have no fetch lands, so this isn't the best Brainstorm deck right now, but still, very good pickup. Um... Paradoxical Outcome, I still don't really get what this is for. If it didn't say non-token, then it could be good, but, like, maybe this is going to be a draw, too. Like, uh, yeah, I'm pretty, definitely taking Brainstorm here. 
interesting deck here where our, our card quality is very high and our fixing is very good, but we do need a few more pieces to pull it together. Like either some draw sevens to lean into that synergy with Narset, or just like some win conditions. That's not something I worry about too much, but right now we're going to struggle to close out the game. And we do have Tar Pit, which can do some stuff. Um, but we, like, we have tons of great card draw, tons of great removal, some two for one, some fast mana, but do need just something to like pull it together. Um, <laughs> we could try to backdoor in a storm of some sort. There's tendrils. I don't think I'm going to take tendrils here, but I'll take frantic search. And we could still maybe become a high tide deck or like just an underworld breach deck. Fire ice wield. That's pretty great. Okay, I don't think we're ever playing Showdown of the Skulls or, like, these green cards. I'll take the Cabal Ritual. There is a world still, like I said, where we backdoor in some sort of storm deck. We don't have Tendrils. It would need to, we would need to get... Oh, well, there's High Tide. We would need to get Brain Freeze and Underworld Breach. But that is possible. Actually, yeah, at this point, Underworld Breach would be a pretty high pickup, I think. Good with Thought Scour, good with our Kakan Trips. Okay, none of those cards. We see Duress, Talisman. I don't think I need like one of these blue cards. Take Through Time would be okay. Yeah, th there's like top two, but we don't have good fetch lands for that. I think I'm leaning towards taking Duress. This talisman does help with the fixing a bit, but we don't have that much stuff to ramp into at this point. Yeah, I'm going to take the duress and hope to wheel, like, maybe this talisman. I don't think Goblin Engineer gets there yet. There's, like, we definitely could have leaned more into artifact stuff. And tried to be, like, a big mana deck playing Ugin. Um, but I'm going to take the duress here. Wow, interesting pick here. So, <laughs> um, there's Ragavan, just based on power level. Could be a bit tough, though. I, we're playing red, but it's kind of a splash. I don't think we can really play this consistently. There's Water Grave, which would help a lot with the fixing. But, we could also take Jace plus Thassa's Oracle. Take, take Jace, try to wheel this, and backdoor into a Doomsday deck. And this would be a really good deck for Doomsday, with tons of card selection, multiple discard spells to protect it. This is, like, honestly perfect. Um, so as good as Watery Grave is, I think I'm going to take the Jace on this game plan. If we don't get the Doomsday, it kind of sucks, because I would definitely rather have Watery Grave than either of these two cards on their own. But if we're able, or like if we don't get the Doomsday. But if we can get Doomsday, then this is just so good. Yeah, close pick, but let's take the Jace here. And there's the Doomsday. So now the question becomes, do we try to wheel it and get greedy? And I think I'm going to be greedy here. It's close, but there's just such good other cards. Um, Firebolt, Wasteland, Flame Tongue, and Brazen Borrower are all good, but I'm mostly looking at these two, and I'm going to take the Dak here. Take Dak, Wheel Doomsday is the plan. And I think that should work. I mean, there is a chance someone takes the Thassa's Oracle speculatively and then takes Doomsday, but, like, I, I really don't think so. This is actually perfect. This gave the deck exactly the kind of angle I was hoping to find. Okay, I think we're actually not playing Soul Ring now, funnily enough. Maybe we will, but it doesn't look like it's at its best. Um, so Dress Down versus Cryptic Command. Or even Zytor's Proven Ground, but like we don't even care that much about the Red Splash. Um, I think I'm actually going to take Dress Down. Cryptic is good, but Triple Blue is tough. I know we just took Jace, but like this lowers the curve. And is also just like a good anti-creature card. We're kind of light on removal for creatures. Fire Covenant's great, but beyond that, like, yeah, I think I think Dress Down will, will be a bit better here. Now we see Echo of Eons, which is good with Narset and Fatal Push. But I think we gotta take the Dark Slick Chores. If we're trying to play double black and triple blue and or triple blue and triple black and red. <laughs> yeah, let's get the fixing. Now we see in two, which doesn't really help us. Um, yeah, I don't think that does anything for us. There's Gush, which is kind of interesting. It's, it's good in, if we're like, it's good in a Doomsday pile. Time Warp doesn't seem that good. Fairy Mastermind doesn't seem that good. Yeah, I'm actually going to take the Gush here. Now we see Force of Negation and Cutdown, both of which are good. 
I think Force of Negation is a little bit more what this deck wants, though. Yeah. So, what are the cuts here? Yeah, I actually weirdly think it is Soul Ring. We just don't have much of a use for two colorless mana. I think I'm just going to cut Retrofitter Foundry 2. I'll still play the Mox. I think Mox is good. Like, one colorless mana we have a lot of uses for. We're very all in on this Doomsday Wheeling, to be honest. I think our deck is going to be much worse if that doesn't come around. Okay, Talisman of Dominance versus Dreams of Steel and Oil. I do like this card, but it's not real. Like, Duress and Inquisition are much better here because they can protect our combo. This doesn't really protect our combo. Don't really care about Valky. So it's Dreams or Talisman. I think I'm going to take the Talisman here. This is great. Like, turn two Talisman, and or even just like turn one Landmox, Talisman, Ancestral or something is great. Lots of cards that we can cast off of it. Oh, let's cut this High Tide. Frantic Search is a maybe. Okay, this Talisman did wheel. Interesting. There's also Top. We're not playing this. Um, top doesn't look that good with relatively few ways to shuffle. It's good with, like, Thought Scour, but that's kind of it. I think I actually, actually I'm going to take this. Okay. <laughs> so, that's the Oracle wheel. That's a good sign. Watery Grave is tempting, but I think I will take the Oracle here. And just be, like, all in on this Doomsday Wheeling. Yes! Okay. I thought it was very, very likely, but still good to see that it's 100%. Mox Opal. Nah, there's a world where that becomes good, but that's not what we're doing. With that being said, I'm never playing any of these other cards, so I guess I will take it. Mish's Research Desk actually looks pretty good here. I think I will potentially play that. It's awkward if we exile Doomsday and we can't play it this turn. Maybe it doesn't make the main deck. Um, time Warp, good late pickup. Okay, let's we we have some cuts to make. This deck looks amazing. So I do like Ledger Shredder here. We have three red three red lands. So do we want to splash red off of that? We also have this Talisman. I think so. I'll cut the Pyrite Spell Bomb. It just is kind of underpowered. I'll cut Time Warp. That's not really what this deck is about. And I'll cut Gush. It's good, like, specifically with Doomsday, but we'll be good with Doomsday no matter what. Um, funny to have Soul Ring on the board, but I do think it's correct here. And I think I'm fine playing 16 lands plus 2 Talismans and a Mox. So, very heavy blue. Black is a small splash, but we are playing Doomsday. So if we did this, that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 blue sources plus a talisman. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 black sources. But we do have um, like uh, Sunken Ruin, which is kind of 2. 1, 2, 3, 4 red, 5 red, seems fine. I think I'm going to play one more island here. We do want a lot of black specifically for the card Doomsday, but the rest of our deck, we don't really need black that much, and we do need blue very badly. Alright, this deck looks sick. I have not played Doomsday yet, um, but this is like pretty much a perfect build for it. I guess if we had a little bit more fixing, like if we'd gotten the Watery Grave and a Fetch or two, that would certainly be a way to upgrade this. But with like Ancestral Brainstorm Thought Scour for cheap card selection, Duress Inquisition to protect the combo, um, a couple pieces of fast mana, like... Both fast as Oracle and Jace. <laughs> this deck has a lot going for it, and I am very excited. See you in round one. All right, we are on the play for round one with our sweet Grixis Doomsday deck, and not a hand we can keep there. Just the mana is too bad. This hand we can keep. Um, I think I'm going to put back the fast as Oracle. That's not really a card you want in your opener. We can just like have it be one of the cards in our deck when we play Doomsday. You go turn two talisman into Inquisition, turn three subtlety, which is a pretty solid curve. It's very interactive. Well, taking faith as looting is not the best. Yeah, that kind of sucks to be honest. I mean, it does slow them down a little bit, but they don't even have red mana right now. We'll see if they go for. Oh, Ledger Shredder, okay, I'm not going to subtlety this. Um, we'll see if they go for... 
I guess I'll play Narset here in case we find Duress. Or do it like this, leaving out the Talisman. Okay, they do go for the Force. Kind of annoying, but not the end of the world. We'll pass back. And then next one, we're just going to probably try to ambush their Ledger Shredder with uh, our subtlety. Uh, maybe we should have held that, actually, for Frantic Search. Yeah, we should have held that. We don't need five, five lands. Slight misplay there. We'll see if that comes back to bite us. So they play Odawara. So we know they're holding Ashen Rider and one other card and two other cards. Killing this is nice because it makes it harder for them to discard this Ashen Rider, although they of course could just find Red Source. We also want to kill them before they get to Sheldock Isle, ideally, because they could have a reanimation spell under that. Okay, I'm just gonna attack. We could play Frantic Search now, but if we draw two good cards, that doesn't seem great. I think I'd rather try to loot away two bad cards than one. Malcolm. Okay, that's bad because that means they can put the letter, the Ashen Rider into the graveyard. Not that we care that much about the Ashen Rider. I mean, it is like a beefy card. It can, like, it gives them somewhat of a clock, but like, we don't care about them exiling any of our permanents particularly. Do they have the reanimation spell? Okay, I think I will play this in response. In case we find a creature. Ow. I mean, if you can find Doomsday, we're still in a fine position. They might take out our Sunken Ruin, might take out, probably taking out Subtlety. Oh no, they do go for the Sunken Ruin. We still have Triple Black there with a the Talisman. So Doomsday is our best draw. Fire Covenant, an interesting one. Um, I think I'm just going to main phase this as bad as it is. So we go nine, we'll see if they take out Talisman of Indulgence or Subtlety. But the problem is, it just goes back to the graveyard, it doesn't get exiled, so they can... If they have another reanimation spell, they can just bring it back. They go for Island, okay. That's interesting, I'm pretty happy to see that. It does take us off of specifically Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, but that's it. Baleful Strix, well, that messes up our subtlety beatdown plan. Not that that was a big part of our plan. Oh, wow. We, that's hilarious. We drew the one card that would punish us. We'll pass. Or rather, I guess the one card that would reward them. Okay, they kill our Strix. There are also two lands, including a black land, away from being able to hard cast this. They can also flashback Faith this looting, which turns on Sheldock Isle. Yep. Snuff out and thought seeds. Okay, we take one. Hoping to find either blue source or like doomsday. Black source. Wow, that's gotta be one of the worst possible draws. This is potentially a tough matchup. We have no hate, we don't have much counter magic, and they have a lot of disruption to mess up with our, our combo. Like if we had resolved that force, or if they had not the force of will, we would have been in great shape. Recurring nightmare, okay, I'll concede to this. Tough first game. I definitely don't want Frantic Search in this matchup. Card disadvantage is not where we want to be. This is a good one. We want to just be like more in on a combo and quickly, but that's not the case here. Um, could play Gush. Yeah, I think I like playing Gush. Subtlety also seems pretty bad. Could play Pyrite Spellbomb. Could play Time Warp, but Time Warp doesn't seem great. Yeah, I'll just play this. Just cantrips and keeps our curve low. But if they like Thoughtseize or Doomsday, honestly, we could struggle to win. Also, we could just like 
play Ancestral Recall, and then we can never lose. Okay, Snuff Out's terrible. Brazen Borrower doesn't do anything, so let's take Necromancy. Maybe we should have cut Fire Covenant as well. For just the 17th land on the play. That probably would have been good, actually. Um... So if we play Island, they're just going to Petty Theft our thing. So I think I'm just going to get this into play. I guess we have the same problem, though. We're just going to play this, and then end of turn, they Petty Theft it. Is there any chance we don't even play it, then? No, no, we should still play it. Like, it at least forces their hand, prevents them from being able to hold Petty Theft. If we draw a black source, honestly, I think I'm just going to jam Doomsday, though. It's a little bit risky. But it also sets us up to potentially just win next turn. We, of course, need to be aware of the snuff out, so we can't play fast as Oracle unless we have exactly zero cards. Huh. So, well, now we can just go for the, the Doomsday. I think that's right. Let's just give them as few draw steps as possible. I've never cast Doomsday before, so I don't know exactly how to make the piles, but I think this should be fine. I don't like this pause, because it might mean they have Force of Will. And if they have Force of Will... Well, I mean, I hope they counted the Mox Pearl, I guess. But if they Force of Will the Doomsday, we're in a pretty bad spot. But I'm just going to go for it. I mean, I don't want to give them more draws to hit it. Come on. That sucks. Okay. Well, we were set up for a turn four win. Not going to be able to do that now. So, and we, Doomsday's gone, so we have, like, no plan to win other than Creeping Tar Pit beat down. Let's go, baby. Yeah, our deck is just extremely soft to Doomsday being stopped. I still think it's good, like, a good deck overall, but... That is a pretty significant weakness. Like, what is our backup plan? We have Ledger Shredder. We cut Subtlety. I mean, are we actually just trying to go all the way with one Creeping Tar Pit? If they just jam their 3-1 and... Oh, wait, no. Brazen Bar was gone, so you can't do that. No play, okay. I mean, maybe we can get there with a 3-2. Uh, interesting draw. Let's... Actually, no, that doesn't do anything because they have this um, snuff out. They could be trying to get to discard to pitch this Atali. That would be kind of interesting. Um... Okay, I think I'm actually going to go for this. We still have mana to go for the Creeping Tar Pit. Alright, we'll just go for Island. Let's tap, like, uh, this. Just play around them, like, bouncing or killing our Talisman. I want to be able to still hold up Miscalculation. All right, try to put them to seven. This is kind of a hilarious game, but feeling pretty good. I mean, there's not a whole lot of things they could have that would answer this. Instant speed burn spell is pretty much it. Hardcast recurring nightmare. Okay, that's fine. Not, I mean, we could counter it, but I, I don't think we want to.
Okay, I'm gonna play Shredder into Ancestral here because I'm fine looting away this Fire Covenant. They can kill this, but now they're, they don't have enough mana, so it actually is like bad for them to stuff this out. They have to use mana. Ooh, good to find a burn spell. All right, still just beating down. This does take us off of Miscalc for a turn. Um, okay, we haven't played land yet. I'm gonna brainstorm. Okay. So put them to four. We have fire covenant or fire ice ready to burn them for two. We can also thought scour ourselves if we don't like the the two cards on top, which we don't really. Odawara would have actually been an answer. That's kind of interesting. Bone shards, discarding. Okay, that is fair enough. Do they have a cheap creature they can play? Oh, Sheldock Isle is live. Okay, well, so we'll see what they have with this. Rona. Okay, that is bad. Even Miss Calc wouldn't have played around this, so they can bring back Ash and Rider. And take out our creeping tar pit. And then what's our plan to win? It's gonna be tough. I don't think it involves these two cards on top. I mean we could just try to win with just milling ourselves, basically. The problem is they have this five five with flying now. Um so let's start with Narset. Duress. Unlikely to do too much, but I will play it. Okay, do we want to take Recurring Nightmare or Mystic Confluence? I think we need to take Recurring Nightmare, and then we can try to counter Mystic Confluence. I'm not going to go for the Mishra's Workshop this turn. I'm actually, weirdly enough, I'm going to ice this. We don't have burn in our deck, so I think we're just like fully off of the damage plan, funnily enough. We're going to try to find Jace and win that way. Jace plus Thassa's Oracle. If they go for Mystic Confluence, I will definitely miscalculation that. And Mishra's Research Desk will help us just churn through our deck. We have 13 cards left. We're going to draw down to 12. Narset down to 11. There's the Jace. Colagun's Command, we have Ledger Shredder, that doesn't do much. Let's minus this. Dress down, interesting. Um, do we go for the Jace? The problem with playing Jace is they could just, if they just have Thass, if we, uh, Mill Thassa's Oracle, and then they kill the Jace. We're in pretty bad shape. But also milling them just seems too slow. Oh, wait, no, we have, we have Jace. To, uh, we can bring it back with the uh, Cooler Guns Command. So let's play this. Uh... Could also go for the Mishra's Research Desk and try to just save the Jace as long as possible. Does seem like a pretty good exchange though for them to miscalculation this. Or uh, Mystic Confluence this. So I'm going to play the Jace and just be on the Thassa's Oracle game plan.
So hoping I don't mill over the Tessa's Oracle. It definitely could happen. I think it's still worth it to mill myself here, though. Like, yeah, we, like, it's not, it's not over if we hit it. Okay, we draw Gush. Interesting. Wait, can we just kill them here? If we So we could go for Mishra's Research Desk Unearthed with two men up. And we have so much devotion. Yeah, wait, this actually seems like this is a winning line. So let's go. Oh, wait, no, we have to pay one to crack this too. Bummer. So if we gush now and find it. Yeah, if we find that Oracle in our top three, we can win here. Let's go for this. We know it's not in the bottom three cards, I'm pretty sure. Hopefully we can just find the Oracle here. We could also find Baleful Mastery, which would let us keep the Jace around. Oh, bummer. Okay, so... What's the game plan now? We could go for Mishra's research desk and then in our end step crack it. I'm pretty sure that works until... Until the end of your next turn, yeah. So, uh, maybe we're just not even supposed to do that though. Now we can just pretty cleanly do that next turn. Let's, but let's see though, because right now we only have five devotion. Or right, right now we have five devotion, but if we if they kill our Jace, then we're down to two devotion. They can kill our Thassa's Oracle with Snuff Out, so then we're still going to have two Devotion. But we draw down four cards, and Mishra's Research just down to two cards. And then even if they kill the Thassa's Oracle, we have two Devotion. Let me quickly just confirm that this work, that, that works the way that I think, that the wording of Thassa's Oracle is what I think it is. Thassa's Oracle, okay. If X is greater than or equal to the number. So yeah, that should be fine. So I'm just going to play Island to hold up uh, Force of Negation. And pass. Crazy game. So they can kill our Jace, which is bad, of course, but not game ending. And then is there any value in playing Dress down here? I think I will play Dress Down in their main phase. We can't play it in our end step, of course, because then we would lose that the Thassa's the Oracle wouldn't work. Okay, so I messed up. We did see the, the Norse at the end. So, we're actually, if it's the bottom card, I hope I didn't say any order. That would be pretty brutal. Let's unearth this. Pay one to sack it. Play land so we can hold up our thing and then play that as an oracle. Crazy game. Then we have 
Force of Negation up in case they have, like, a bounce spell. If they have a kill spell plus bounce spell, then that could break it up. But we they kill that, and they pay four life. Okay. Wow. Wild game. I was feeling, like, they top decked. I think we knew, like, almost all their cards when they had the Force of Will, and we could have just gotten a clean win with Doomsday. But then we're able to just win by just going through our entire library. That is a perk of Frantic Search, I guess. Um, I like the I, I like the Dress Down a lot. Very good against their reanimation stuff. Do we want to make any changes? Probably not. This still seems bad. This still seems bad. Retrofit or Foundry seems bad. Yeah. Let's just run it back. Unless we want to cut Fire Covenant. They have Lurus, Rona. Just killing... Honestly, it's fine, actually. I think, like, killing Atali is, is actually a reasonable play sometimes. On the play, maybe we could bring in a land, but on the draw, this seems fine. Um, I also do like having Gush in this matchup, for sure. Okay, we're not doing a good job of finding Ancestral in the opener, but this is still a keep. We have Doomsday with two black sources. We have Duress to mess up their stuff. We have Talisman on two. It's like kind of interactive, not in um, like card drawing or comboing, but I still think it's definitely a keep. Inquisition, okay. Hopefully they don't have Rona here. Faithless looting, okay. They discard two huge dudes, okay. Well, I don't think they've, we haven't seen the card reanimate. That's the only thing that gets us here. So we're gonna get a turn to mess them up. Oh man, I really wish we had a blue source. We'll play Talisman into Inquisition. Yeah, should we find the lead on Inquisition here? And then hopefully they don't have two reanimation cards. Oh, interesting. Um, I guess I'll take the Strix here. And then if they go for Lurus, we can just go Coal Against Command. Get a nice little two for one. Of course, I hope we, like, if they top deck a reanimation spell, it sucks, but they don't, so far at least. And then if we find a blue spell, a blue card, we're protected with Force of Negation. Okay, not a blue card, but that's not a bad one, because now we can go Duress, take the snuff out, and then make them discard their last card. So just sort of pick them apart with a bunch of interaction. Um, if they top deck a blue source, they can go for Creeping Tar Pit. We're still in a situation where uh, we could also just play Doomsday, but I think it's better to just like take them out of resources, hope they don't top deck something this turn. And then next turn, especially if we find a blue source, we can go for Doomsday. Okay, that's fine. They discard Duress and Brazen Ball. We're both pretty good cards, so that could mean they found a reanimation spell. Really, really hoping we find a blue card. Yes, okay. So let's just play Doomsday then. Okay, so we search for five cards. Let's make them Thassa's Oracle, Jace, Ancestral Recall, Duress. And... Um... Not actually sure what we want the last card to be. Potentially just another discard spell. Yeah. So we're so ideally we can go. Okay, so so the last one is the one that so we're gonna go fastest oracle or uh, Jace is gonna be the bottom card. Then Inquisition. 
Oh no, then Thass is Oracle. Then discard, 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 or Ancestral. And the plan is to draw Ancestral, and then discard spell into Thass's Oracle for the kill on, on the next turn. Okay. Duress. Mana Drain, wow. All right, that's his Oracle. Great game. All right, I've sort of talked some bad stuff about Doomsday in the past, but maybe it's secretly amazing. We're one and oh, a harrowing one and oh, but one and oh nonetheless. See you in round two. All right, we are on the play for round two against Little Moth. Um, Man, another one of these hands that just doesn't have any colors. Yeah, I think we ship this. It, it's pretty far away from doing what we want. This seems better. Let's keep and put back. Huh, it's interesting. Just playing, like ramping into a quick J seems pretty good. I think I'm actually going to put back Dak, weirdly. I really like Dak Faden, but I definitely want the mana sources. This is like our combo card. And then we can also just play Jace early. And that's just like a nice value engine if they mess up our Doomsday plan. Ooh, okay. I'm going to go for an upkeep. Ancestral, just play around, like Reprieve or something. I think they would have manatized this if they had it. Okay, good hits. Okay, I don't care too much about that. Um, that is a black source for Doomsday. We have a few lines here. Could you play Jace? We could play Jace or we could play Talisman into Narset. We could have even just played Talisman into Doomsday. Maybe Talisman into Doomsday is just the play, actually. Just try to win as quickly as possible. We'd go to seven, and then we would take... We'd, uh, we'd go to seven, tapping this, then six... Se sorry, 17, 16, 15. Then Doomsday would pay... It rounds up, so we would pay eight life down to seven... And then this hits us for three. But then we can theoretically kill them on our next turn. Alternatively, we play not Jace first. Huh. Close play. I mean, it is scary to go down to seven against a Boros deck. Can we even kill them, I guess? We would have five mana... On turn, we'd, yeah, we would have five mana, and we could play just Ancestral into Thassa's Oracle, and just plan on that being enough. Like, Dur Ancestral, Thass Ancestral Duress, Thassa's Oracle. We would have to pay, no, we wouldn't even have to pay life necessarily, or maybe one life. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go for the kill as fast as possible here. Crazy game. So let's go. Ancestral. Having Ancestral, of course, makes this way better. Thass is Oracle. Um, Inquisition. I mean, it doesn't matter too much to a certain extent. Uh, Thought Scour. Uh, 
and miscalculation. Then we'll go um, miscalc on the bottom. And the plan is to go on, yeah, so then just thoracle thought scour, inquisition, ancestral. Pass back. We're at seven on turn three. They don't have a mountain in place, so they can't fire blast us. Rampaging for Osadon, okay. Poor sequencing on their part, but that doesn't matter here. Yeah, I think we're good to go. The only thing we lose to... Oh, they didn't attack. That's weird. The only thing we lose to is subtlety. Or uh, solitude, which I don't really think we can beat. Oh, wait, we can. We can just jace. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna, Inquisition them. Okay, they definitely don't have anything that does anything. Their deck looks decent, but yeah, so we'll take this, and go land. I think I'm gonna show them Jace rather than Thassa's Oracle because this is like, like instant speed removal is good against this. They might cut all their instant speed removal and that could be relevant. So mill ourselves and win the game. All right, very solid. Turn four win um, while like double ramping and playing Ancestral and playing a discard spell. I will take it. So playing against red, white aggro, um, could play either of these two just to help us stay alive. Tamshi is a 2-3. If it was a 2-4, it would be a consideration. Um, is there anything that we don't want? Mishra's research desk might be just a little clunky. We play Pyrite Spellbomb instead. Um, Narset seems a little underpowered. I mean, it's not the worst. I think if the static is not that good, I would rather play Hangerback Walker just as a blocker. I still don't think Soul Ring is worth it, though, funnily enough. Really wish this was a on color mox. The mox sapphire would be amazing here. I also don't like fiery eyelet. I don't like that it pays life, but our red cards are very good, especially fire covenant. So I'm still gonna play it. So just cutting some of our clunkier card draw. Ugh, fire covenant, get out of here. This hand is pretty bad. It's functional, but we don't have a black land. We're not even in here close to doomsday. I think I'm actually gonna ship it. And now we have Ancestral, but no Blue Land Hand. I will keep this, though, and put back probably Brainstorm. Really hoping to find a Blue Land. Any land would do, though, because any land gives us Talisman, and then we have Fire Covenant available, which buys us a lot of time. I will note, this deck deals a lot of damage to ourselves, actually, between Fire Covenant, Doomsday, and then, like, two Talismans and a Fiery, fi fiery Islet. But... I still think this deck is just gas. We do have subtlety up if we need it, but I would definitely prefer that not to happen. Um, just when we're on a, on a mulligan. Actually, I should not have six. No Ragavan, that is a relief. Beautiful. Never didn't have it. And find some good hits as well. Subtlety at the ready. I probably will pitch it if they play almost anything, frankly. Okay, let's just go. I think I'm going to play Talisman here. Could play a 1 1 Hangerback Walker, but developing the mana seems more important. No play. All right.
think I'm just going to play Talisman and hanger back. We could, of course, play a 2-2 hanger back walker, but developing seems better. Although, actually, maybe better still is just icing their land. Yeah, I think I like that plan. Which one do we want to tap? Probably their mountain. Punished, but also not really. Um, damn, I'm just going to jam a 3-3 three, three hanger back walker. Giver of Runes is kind of annoying against Fire Covenant, but really not that bad. Just going to pass. Weird game. I feel like somehow we're not as, head as, as ahead as we should be, but we're still pretty ahead. Yeah, we might just win this game with a beatdown plan. Okay, they just concede. So, solid game two. Uh, both pretty fast games, time-wise. 2-0. Maybe Doomsday is secretly sick. I, uh, I When this they first made this change, I said that I didn't like it because they cut the Kiki-Jiki combo, and I like Kiki-Jiki more. But... So far, it's looked pretty sweet. We're 2-0, and, and I will see you in the finals. Oh, we got paired up. Let's win the die roll. Okay, step one failed. They rolled a six, and we rolled a one. Then let's draw a fast hand with Ancestral Recall. Okay, quite good hand actually. If we find a land in our top five cards, which is very likely, then we can go Ancestral into turn two, Talisman into Inquisition, which is just a phenomenal start. We have both of these guys in our hand, which is kind of funny. Um, we're playing 16 lands plus a Mox, so we have 15 hits out of 33 cards with five looks. Um, I mean, yeah, it's like 96% or something, like very, very high. Of course, if they counter our Ancestral or discard it or something, things get worse. Opponent's down to five. But again, if they just play like turn one Inquisition of Kozilek, turn two Dark Confidant, and we miss our land drop for a couple draws, then they could easily win on a mold five. Don't thought sees me. Yes. Still pretty scary to see a Swamp, though, because this is a deck that can win on a mold five pretty easily if they just go end of turn and Tomb. Come on, Ancestral, find me a land. Nice. And we even find Force of Negation. <laughs> All right, solid start. We get the old turn one win. Turn one, win. I'm honestly gonna screenshot that, that's kind of funny. Turn one win with, ten, with nine cards in hand. All right, so we don't know what we're up against. I think I'm going to make this exchange again against a black deck. Um, Do we want to play Subtlety? I really just don't know what I'm up against. I think I'll keep one card disadvantage. Well, I'm definitely keeping Force of Negation, but I'll keep a second card disadvantage spell when we're on the draw. That does sort of make it seem like they're more a fair deck. Like if they're just trying to like play him to Torok or something, I don't know. Uh, I'll keep this not as good as our last hand, but I like having Force of Negation on the draw. We have multiple interactive spells. We have all our colors. Definitely keep. Okay, I'm gonna let this resolve. Not not a card that I want to Force of Negation, or yeah, counter with Force. I actually don't know what they'll take here. I can sort of see anything. I hope they take the Asses Oracle. Probably scariest if they take Miscalc because that means they have a good play. Well, actually, I guess real scariest thing is they, if they take Force of Negation because that might mean they have a big play lined up for next turn. They do take it. Okay, so maybe just like Dark Ritual and a Mind Twist coming next turn. Ha, ha, ha. They're going to maybe concede to this Ancestral. The 
This looks like a hymn to Torok. Oh, Voidwalker? Okay. Not too worried about that. I do need to deal with it eventually. So we could go Ledger Shredder into Duress. I think that is the line. Oh wait, no, we actually can't. Because we have to play the Mox Pearl first. Okay, so I'm gonna inquis I'm gonna address them first, and then decide if I want to play Ledger Shredder or hold a Miscalc based on what we see. Okay, let's take the Animate Dead. Play Mox Pearl. And I think it is worth it. I don't want to let them resolve either of these cards, so I'm just going to pass. It's kind of awkward because I don't want to really give them anything with this Void Walker. I, I don't want to Thought Scour myself or them if they're playing Reanimator. I don't want to cycle Miscalc and let them have the thing. Okay, they play Copter. I will Miscalc this. And then if they they can hold a miscalc, but then they're not attacking. That seems like a fine exchange for us. They do attack. So if I draw land, I might just Baleful Mastery this. Okay. Interesting. So we could go Talisman into Shredder. But then if they hit us, they can just play Gix and hit us and that would be annoying. So I think what I'm actually gonna do is just play Talisman Pass and then Baleful Mastery this. It like gives them a two for one. I think that's okay though. Would have much preferred this be land. So here comes Gix, that's fine. So they get a little two for one here, that's okay. Uh, I wanted to find an untapped blue land pretty badly there. Cause now the problem is they can hit us with this and draw a card. Don't love that. I think we still do just play the Shredder though. Yeah, back-to-back -back turns, we're just drawing like a normal land would have been great, but like Talisman and Creeping Tar Pit are not, not legit. Because if we could connive, then this can't swing into our Letter Shredder. But this way they get to draw yet another card. They're sort of offsetting the advantage that we got through our Ancestral. Still, I think it's a quite good position. I mean, if we ever find Doomsday, we just win. Um, we have multiple pieces of card draw here. Also, also just playing fast as Oracle to Scry 3 is not the worst. And they don't have anything big in the graveyard, so we don't need to fear a reanimation spell too much. If they, I mean, they could, you know, cycle the troll and then bring that back, but that's not nearly as bad as putting, like, a Trax into play. We are at 14, and of course, Doomsday pays a lot of life. Okay, let's go for Brainstorm into Thassa's or into Thought Scour. Get a little value. Okay, um. I think I'm gonna go dress down Thassa's Oracle and then play Narset and loot and, and loot away the Thassa's Oracle. And then we can guarantee we're gonna hit something off of the Narset.
They might have a kill spell. Obviously, black decks are good at killing creatures. But even if they have that, this is fine. Narset shuts down their card draw. That's minus. Colagon's Command doesn't seem that good here, actually. Probably is still the take, though. I mean, taking Talisman doesn't seem that good. Yeah, I'll take Colagon's Command. And then pass, and then we're well suited to to connive again next turn. We'll leave this back. They're holding Troll. I mean, hopefully their plan is just to cast Troll. No removal spell end of turn is good, of course. Also worth noting, now we have triple blue, so we can cast everything in our deck. Four mana for grief. Okay. So they probably take our coal guns command here, but then we can untap and minus Narset. Keep the cards flowing. Keep digging for Doomsday. Not what I was hoping for. That is sort of what I was hoping for. Just gonna start milling myself. I guess if we mill Doomsday, it's kind of awkward because they could kill our Jace. There's Doomsday, okay. Um, I guess I'll discard Island. I mean, if we discard Island, we don't have Thought Scour up. I don't think that matters too much, though. Let's play Land and Pass. Planning on cracking the... Make sure research desk end of turn. And then we can just kill them next turn, probably. Oh no, mind twist. Oh, dismember that. Okay, that's fine. Then they can kill our Jace. Holding troll into unknowns. We should be able to win though. Unless they have a discard spell here. I'm gonna leave the mission's research desk to make the kill next turn a little easier. Ooh, good draw. Let's just fire that off to clear the path. First, let's make sure we have enough, though. So we go Inquisition, Doomsday. Then we have Mox Pearl plus two islands up. We crack the Mox Pearl to use the Mishra's Research Desk. Yeah, I think this works. What are we even worried about, though? Maybe we don't need to fire off this Inquisition. Yeah, I don't actually think we do, so let's go. Doomsday. So we'll go Jace, Thassa's Oracle, Ancestral. I don't know where Duress is. Is it? Okay, it's in exile, right? Um, they can see. Okay. Very solid. Man, that, that feels good. This is the last day of Vintage Cube. This is my last draft of it. Um, and yeah, that's kind of a perfect way to go out, actually. This deck was just beautiful. We had some tricky games. We had some games where we just dominated. Good to get a little mix of both. 
Um, yeah, this is kind of a perfect Doomsday deck. Having three, like, I mean, having Ancestral is just amazing. It makes your, like, it makes the Doomsday piles so much easier to just win immediately. And it also, like, finds your Doomsday and just, like, rebuilds through Disruption and everything. But even beyond that, just having, like, these three plus Mishra's Research Desk really lets us churn through our deck quickly. Um, then we have lots of fast mana to just do our thing quickly. And these are way better than Signets in this deck. Just being able to go turn two, like, Talisman into Ancestral or this Talisman into Duress or whatever, it's great. Having uh, Force of Negation and Subtlety as zero mana interaction was super helpful. We had, the fixing wasn't perfect, but it was good enough. Um, then with just, like, Narset and Jace as powerful card draw engines. Um, this deck was just well-rounded. Having better fixing would have helped. And then I guess if I were to, like, really nitpick, just having a few more cantrips. Like, if we could add Ponder and Preordain and cut, like, Subtlety and Frantic Search, that would make this deck even better. Um, but, yeah, it was a sweet deck. I love that we had, like, a plan B in the game where they, like, force of will our Doomsday. We could just win the game. Like, we almost won with the alternate plan one of just swinging with Tar Pit, but then they find a way, find a way to deal with that. Then... We found the second alternate game plan of just Jace, just churning through our entire deck. And yeah, just really chef's kiss, perfect ending to the season. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Supreme Draft is coming up, so I'll probably do some content with that. And I'll see you next time.